Butch. Thank you. Please be seated, and thank you all for coming to the White House, and I'm sure glad we're doing this indoors instead of out. But uh, may I salute Secretary Lujan, a member of our cabinet, uh, Fronmeyer, my dear friend who heads this arts effort and does it most effectively, I might say. Uh, Senator Hatch was to be right back here, Orrin Hatch, and then in front of him, uh, Chairman, uh, our distinguished Senator Claiborne Pell. And the Congressman Yates was coming, and he is over modestly in the back row along with another Congressman, Ralph Regula there, but more than welcome, both uh, champions of the arts, bring good judgment and balance to uh, the questions that uh, concern us all. So I salute them, and um, let me just say how pleased we are to see here the members of the President's uh, Committee on the Arts and the Humanities, uh, so many corporate patrons without whom uh, the arts would not flourish as much as they do. And then, of course, especially today, the family and the uh, friends of the honored recipients. Uh, we're delighted to welcome you to this historic East Room. Uh, and this afternoon, we honor, uh, with the National Medal of Arts, a group of men and women whose creative efforts really do capture America's vigor and spirit. Our artists draw on uh, inspirations and cultures from around the world, but then reinterpret them in uh, distinctive ways, creative ways, American ways. And their passion and their genius and their courage uh, add new dimension to our lives. They remind us of a truth expressed long ago by William Blake, who wrote, nations are destroyed or flourish in proportion as their poetry, painting, and music are destroyed or flourish. And uh, fortunately for us, art in America is alive and well. In all its forms, it, it captures the exhilarating feeling of being an American, daring everything, dreaming everything, reaching for everything. And more importantly, it inspires Americans to dare more, dream more, and reach further. Uh, today, uh, we honor several. Uh, their honor, the honorees express vital emotions and truths. Pearl Primus weaves together dance and anthropology, calls forth the joy and excitement and spiritual vigor of our African and Caribbean heritage. Pietro Beluski, innovative architectural designs, uh, they evoke the grandeur of this land, uh, particularly the uh, Pacific Northwest. His works evoke scenes as various as soaring mountain summits and quiet forest floors uh, checkered by slanting sunbeams. Roy Acuff uh, keeps alive the undying tradition of authentic country music, and I confess, I love that music, and he has helped make country music really is the father of it, you might say. I don't want to date Roy, but uh, the father, and, and really has made it what it is today, a music for all Americans an art form that doesn't hold back one single thing. And it captures the joys and the aches and the frustrations that most of us feel, but few of us can express. In a world where people too often try to reduce life's imponderables to black and white entries on a spreadsheet, our award winners provide color and depth and perspective. Uh, teacher and painter Richard Diebenkorn does not blink uh, from the challenge of expressing himself as he sees fit. In his studio or in his classroom, he teaches the importance, uh, the necessity of personal integrity. Uh, Honey Coles, Charles Honey Coles, exuberant dance captures the sheer vitality and the joy of the American spirit. And it shows that you can't be fully American without breaking into a sweat uh, and having fun from time to time. We often talk of a new world characterized by competition and, and enterprise, but our kids will not enjoy full lives if they don't experience and appreciate art. Uh, life without art is flat and dull and gray, 
and it contains none of the highs and lows that give meaning, meaning to uh, daily affairs. Some of our honorees have devoted their careers to ensuring that all Americans enjoy the enriching influence of art. Uh, Maurice Abravanel keeps symphony music popular by conducting and teaching. With his Santa Fe Opera, uh, John Crosby gives young American singers the opportunity to train and perform here in their own country. And Isaac Stern, Barbara demanded to sit next to Isaac Stern, uh, <laughs> expresses the nobility that lies within us all with his heart and that magnificent violin. And just this year, in the middle of a threatened Scud attack, a Scud a missile attack in Tel Aviv, he returned to the stage and continued playing. Uh, Isaac Stern does more than play an instrument. He inspires us with his virtuosity, his courage, and his commitment to humanity. We also ought to recognize benefactors who, through vision and steadfast commitment, keep art alive. American art thrives because of art's administrators, like our own, uh, our own uh, Jay Carter Brown, who has molded the National Gallery into a museum really for the entire nation. Uh, volunteers enhance our arts. Men and women like uh, R. Phillips Haynes, Jr., whose generous patronage has guided the regional and national growth of the Arts Council movement. It is unlikely, but uh, Philip will not want to claim that he and I were classmates at college many years ago, but I claim it proudly, as a matter of fact. Uh, we owe a debt, of, a debt to passionate stewards of the arts, such as uh, the famed Kitty Carlisle Hart, a distinguished performer uh, committed to making quality art available to all Americans. And artists can continue to develop and flourish, as I mentioned earlier, uh, because of corporate sponsors like Texaco, which has set a standard in corporate philanthropy through its half century of generous support for the arts. As we honor these beacons of excellence, I'm reminded of something that uh, President Kennedy once said. In serving his vision, the artist best serves his nation. And you honorees have all served our nation brilliantly. Uh, thank you. Uh, congratulations. It's a joy to have you here. And now I'd simply like to ask uh, John Fronmeyer to assist me in presenting to you these symbols of our nation's gratitude and high esteem. John? First, Maurice Abravanel for the richness of a lifetime devoted to conducting and teaching music from Wagner to Weil, his three decades of dedication to the U Utah Symphony have shaped it into one of this country's most respected and accomplished orchestras. for bringing joy to the American people through the proud traditions of his authentic country music. This fiddle-playing son of a preacher touched the roots of this nation and rose to become the Grand Old Opry's king of country music. Pietro Beluski, 
for shaping the style of 20th century America through his innovative architecture, particularly his designs that evoke the grandeur of the Pacific Northwest. Homes, offices, churches, and museums across the nation reflect the breadth of his originality. Jay Carter Brown, for his commitment to preserving our country's cultural treasures, as an arts administrator of vision, he has molded the National Gallery into a museum for the entire nation and has provided guidance and counsel for numerous commissions throughout this land. Charles Honey Coles, for the sheer American vitality of his exuberant dance and choreography. From the sidewalks of Philadelphia to the boards of Broadway, his feet have tapped out the story of America's country spirit. John O. Crosby, for his dream of giving young American artists the opportunity to train and perform in their own country, during 34 years he has directed the Santa Fe Opera Company, and his vision there he has expressed of musical excellence, which has enriched not only Santa Fe, but the entire nation. Richard Diebenkorn, for his fierce commitment to the personal integrity of artistic expression, steadfastly exploring his own vision through the abstract expressionist movement, he has stamped his unique mark on contemporary American art from the canvas to the classroom. Philip Haynes, Jr., for his informed counsel and generous patronage of the arts in America. He guided the national and regional growth of the Arts Council movement, and his leadership sets an example for volunteerism in this country. Kitty Carlisle Hart, for her passionate stewardship of the arts as a distinguished performer and public arts administrator, her many years of active commitment create a vivid legacy of the importance of making quality art available to all Americans. Primus, for weaving together dance, 
choreography, and anthropology to explore themes of spirituality and heritage. Through the prism of dance, she has introduced us to the rich cultural experiences of Africa, the Caribbean, and the southern United States. You should know that Pearl Primus choreographed this ceremony up here. <laughs> Isaac Stern, for the genius of a brilliant career which has spanned and shaped this American century, he is the inspiration and the conscience of this nation's musical life, a compassionate humanitarian, as well as a master of the violin, universally recognized as one of our most gifted artists. Mexico, for setting the standard in corporate philanthropy through its half century of generous support for the arts, in particular with its sponsorship of the Metropolitan Opera's radio and television broadcasts, it has enabled opera to build a national constituency, accepting for Texaco is its chief Execu executive officer and president, James Kinnert. concludes the official part. Now you get a free meal and, but before you do that, we hope that those who feel up to it would stop by and just uh, say hello to Barbara. In other words, we'll have a very informal, fast, mercifully fast receiving line out here. And again, my congratulations to all and thank you for coming and we'll see you in, in the hallway. Here.